Welcome to my WWE 2022 uh, recap, and I'm doing it a little bit differently uh, tonight. I wanted to move this around so you guys can be able to see some of the notes and um, some of the things that went on tonight as far as the event. I'm going to try not to make this too long, but it was just the one thing I want to say about this event real quick before we get ready to talk about it is that some of the matches are just so predictable. And you just once you I love the Royal Rumble. But it's just like once you get to the final four, you know who's going to end up winning the match. You know who's going to end up winning the, the matches. And you don't even have to watch the rest of the match to find out what's going to happen. And based on some of the events, they already can and tell who are these are these the who are the winners of the, of the separate Royal Rumble matches going to challenge. You already know it was like there is the each of the Royal Rumble winners are seeking revenge they're trying to get back at the other superstars for taking their championship or um costing them their championship or they have a a sole purpose of coming back to become champion all over again and um it's just so many things that was going on in this uh, in this event i didn't just like the writing too much for that just how everything was booked well i would say the best match i gotta get into it Roman reigns versus seth rollins i'm gonna probably make this a little bit smaller too but Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins is one of the one of the best. Um, you see me it was like I'm closing eyes, but <laughs> swim around. It's one of the best matches that um, I enjoy watching. But the ending wasn't really all that good because it ended in a DQ. I wanted to see a definitive a definitive winner for this, but it was there was just no way they were gonna let him lose the title because based on the events they were just setting it up for the Brock Lesnar few all over again and he's going to end up taking the championship i'm sure at wrestlemania because they built it up that way from everything that went don't went on tonight and uh, i wouldn't be surprised if somebody else ends up getting into the slot and you know trying to get into the match and it becomes a triple threat uh who knows who uh, what other superstars will probably get in into it but it was so awesome to see Seth Rollins come out there in his shield gear it brought back so many memories from the nostalgia of the shield one of the best stables if not the best it's one of my favorite stables of the entire wwe next to d generation x or dx the hardys edge and christian christian and um just so many more uh team 3d just so many cool little stables that they came up with the nexus y'all remember the nexus so it's just stables like that that i really enjoy seeing and um, it was so unexpected to see him come out and compete. He was just dominating him. And he was really inside of uh, Roman he Reigns, his head. And just what everything that he was saying on the microphone and just everything that he did. And he had the audacity to come out and play. He came out to the Shield theme. It was just awesome to see that. I was just super excited to see that. But um, that was definitely one of my favorite highlights. And even though it was a great match, it just didn't end well. So... I just wish it was uh, booked where either Roman Reigns beat him clean or just it was just some kind of definitive winner. They could have kept it going, but it ended in disqualification because he he uh, exceeded the five count where you have to break the hole or to break the submission uh, after a five count. If you don't let go, it's, you just automatically get disqualified. Seth Rollins won, but that's, you can't win the championship when you get disqualified from a match. So there's, that's just how it ended, and he ended up doing almost the same thing, something similar to what Seth Rollins did with a series of chair shots when he turned his back on the shield and stuff like that. But I, don't, I, I hope they bring this back and do another another match. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think that's probably just a one-time thing and uh, just something for the entertainment of the event. Uh, I'm curious to see how he's going to react for Monday Night Raw when Seth Rollins comes out because he is not a SmackDown superstar. But I wonder what's going to happen. How is this all going to play out? Is he still going to try to go after Roman Reigns for another rematch? Maybe he'll find a way to insert himself to make it a triple threat match. Who knows what's going to happen? But let's start going through some of these matches. We're going to start talking about the, the women's Royal Rumble match. And Ronda Rousey surprising is bad. If you guys already haven't, haven't known and noticed already. I didn't know she was going to come back at all. And just once I found out about the rumor... And once I heard her music hit, I was like, it's all over now. She definitely about to win this match. It didn't even really matter who was in the ring. Because she just started cleaning everybody up and knocking them out of the ring and eliminating people left and right. So it was already 
just written in the books for Ronda Rousey to win this match, basically, as soon as she came out. And uh, I thought maybe if she wasn't going to be in the Rumble, she was probably going to make some kind of appearance after Becky Lynch's match against Dewdrop. So, we already know Ronda Rousey going to win that championship, and we already know who, who she's challenging. I'm surprised Asuka didn't even make it into this Royal Rumble match. But let's talk about the surprise entrances, entrance that were in this match. They had the women's Royal Rumble match had way more surprise interest than the men's. And uh, I have them all listed here. Melina was awesome to see coming out at number number two going against Asha Banks. But she didn't even last that long. They had her eliminated too quick, too quickly. I think she's still on Impact Wrestling. So it was, it was crazy to see that. Kelly Kelly, I remember. ECW days and all that kind of stuff. And just from the old Attitude Era, Michelle McCool. And uh, the WWE official herself, Sonya Deville, came out, but she didn't really compete right away. She went to the announce table to do some little commentary, and um, it was scripted because she was supposed to wait till um, Naomi was coming, wait for Naomi to come out in the Royal Rumble to try to eliminate her. But what was crazy is funny because right under Sonya Deville, we have Cameron from the Funkadactyls that you guys probably don't remember. The Funkadactyls was um was a tag team, a tag team stable, and it was Naomi. Uh, well, Cameron was is Naomi's former tag team partner, and they also had this guy called Rodas Clay who was doing a little dance and stuff like that. He did the little dance moves, so it was cool to see that. But um, Cameron, I think, was the most least expected. It's like, is she back now? All of a sudden, maybe she's gonna form a bond with uh, Naomi. I wonder if she's going to be back on uh, Friday Night Smackdown. Maybe this was just for the, just for the a surprise entrance, just to have them in the match to fill that slot. And I just feel like they have so much talent and all these different ce celebrities that's coming out there taking these slots and legends and stuff. We don't need too many legends. We have the nostalgia is there to see these legends and all. I get that, but you guys have a lot of talent in the back, and you guys are not utilizing the talent. You just having to sit there. They just have to be in the back. They don't have any matches. They don't have any matches and get to compete, and that's why they get end up getting a release. They done so many releases so far with this company, and they moved on, and that's why they're shining bright over on AEW. And I hope some of these other superstars do that as well. Because it, it gets it gets insane just seeing all these 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 superstars just that's all this talent and they're just not even being used and they're not getting the, the opportunities that they deserve to be champions and be great champions and the competitors or at least go out there and compete and try to earn some kind of opportunity. It's crazy, but camera from the Funkadactyls that was just something different. So sitting. Uh, I was going to say, Naomi eliminated her. Sonya Deville de eliminated Cameron, and immediately after that, Naomi came out to eliminate uh, Sonya Deville. So I think they're going to probably renew that rivalry more than likely. Somebody that I didn't really know too much about, Ivory, I'm guessing she's a, a legend, but uh, she got eliminated by uh, Rhea Ripley when she was trying to come out on the microphone. I don't remember her. But Mickey James from Impact Wrestling, she even, had, she even brought over the championship. Uh, the Impact Wrestling Championship. She's the women's champion over there on the show. I don't even watch Impact Wrestling. But Alicia Fox was another entrant. The Bella Twins, she had Brie and Nikki Bella. Brie Bella was in the match longer than Nikki Bella, so she's still pretty good. Um, I don't know. Maybe she can go to AEW too. But uh, Lita was cool to see. She still has uh, some talent. She could still be competing if she wants to. But I'm surprised Trish Stratus didn't even make it. I thought maybe if they had, if Lita was in this Rumble, Trish Stratus, Trish Stratus would be in this match. But she didn't. But we got Summer Rae. We got Mighty Holly or Molly Holly, who got eliminated by uh, Nikki, almost a, a superhero, uh, who took her cape off and just threw out of the ring and stuff like that and started dominating. And then, last but not least, we have Ronda Rousey as our uh, surprise entrant, or our last one. And once she came out, I just knew she was going to end up winning. So, we already know she's going to challenge Becky Lynch and um, get her revenge at WrestleMania and snag the title. And Becky's, I'm, I'm unbeaten. I'm, I'm undefeated. I've beaten everybody. And uh, I shut them all down. And, and speaking of shutting people down, she already beat. She ended up, eating, ended up retaining her championship against Dewdrop. So, the manhandle slam, let's say this, the manhandle slam is the rock bottom. 
It's the, it's the rock bottom, but a different name. That's what it is. And that's exactly how she beat Dewdrop is from a manhandle slam from the top of the turnbuckle. How else was she going to end up winning? Unless she was probably going to cheat. I don't know. But they had to give her some kind of cool little finisher to make it a, a, a good a good win or a good victory for over Dewdrop. But um, let's just move on to the next match. So she's definitely going to get challenged by Ronnie Rousey. She, she's, she's not going over to SmackDown to Charlotte. It's just for Charlotte. Someone else is going to challenge Charlotte. It's probably going to be Sasha Banks more than likely. I'm thinking if it's not Sasha, it's probably going to be a returning Bailey. More than likely, prior to WrestleMania, she might end up coming out and returning for the in time for the Elimination Chamber. Who knows what's gonna happen? But I think it's probably gonna be Sasha and Bailey, or Sasha or Bailey, or maybe Aaliyah. Maybe possibly will probably get a chance to uh, shine and get a championship run. And uh, Tony Storm, she's already gone. I thought she was gonna probably get a championship run. But um, let's get to the next one. We got the WWE Championship, Brock Lesnar and, and and Bobby Lashley. I thought Bobby Lashley was gonna um was was gonna lose, but once I saw Roman Reigns come out and Paul Heyman betraying um uh, Brock Lesnar, handing him the championship, he handed Roman Reigns the WWE Championship and knocked him down. It was it was crazy to see. It is like they just they just reunited and they just made up. As far as the, the bond and the connection, but I think when they had that altercation, I think at the same time, Paul Heyman was also just torn on who he wants to uh, stay with, the tribal chief or uh, the beast incarnate. But it, it makes it obvious that he wants to stay with Roman Reigns, and now he's going to have the Usos and Paul Heyman all back in his corner. But now you know, things change later on in the night, so it's just going to be all over again for WrestleMania for him to get his uh, redemption. But Bobby Lashley becoming WWE champion is definitely deserved. I would like to see him have a decent title run, but maybe somebody else is probably going to end up challenging him and taking that away. I'm not sure who's going to who's going to be next to challenge him for that championship. But Bobby Lashley deserves it, and uh, Brock Lesnar in the, just to be open. He wasn't even supposed to be the WWE champion in the first place. Big E Langston was supposed to be the, the guy who's still holding the championship because he was supposed to retain originally prior to the Royal Rumble. He was supposed to retain his championship at day one. But things changed. Brock Lesnar had, was originally scheduled to take the title away from Roman Reigns at day one, but things changed. So they just prolonged it. So instead of losing it at day one, and, and tonight, or at Royal Rumble, he's gonna lose it at the Royal. At, I was gonna say at the Royal Rumble, at the at WrestleMania, since he ended up winning the Royal Rumble match. But let's go go ahead and scroll through and start talking about the other matches to wrap up, because uh, Bobby Lashley is our new champion now. So I'm curious to see who's gonna be uh, our next uh, contenders for these other champions. Maybe some other competitors will probably find a way to get into the match. Maybe. How are they gonna? How's the elimination chamber gonna work? Maybe the winner of the elimination chamber of those separate matches will probably get a championship opportunity to probably get involved to in the championship. Well, in the title hunt, the title hunt maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure what's gonna happen. But um, let's just wrap this up. The Edge and Beth Phoenix match. I don't really have to talk about this. Edge and Beth Phoenix or the uh the grit couple, rated R couple. Edge and Beth Phoenix, this was pretty good to see. With for a mixed tag team match, taking on the Miz and Marie. So Edge and Beth Phoenix obviously was gonna win. So that's not even a really it doesn't even take any thought. You didn't even have to watch the match itself to even understand what was gonna happen there. They made it seem like Miz and Maurice had a chance, especially when they were gonna cheat and hit when they hit Beth with the um the brick in the purse from the back. So But I knew they weren't gonna have Edge and Beth Phoenix just lose. So I wonder what, after, now that this match is all done and this feud is hopefully all done and over and done with, I wonder what's going to happen, what's Edge's next move? Maybe a title hunt? Maybe he's going to challenge Bobby Lashley next and maybe he'll become a WWE champion. But um, let's get to the Men's Royal Rumble match to wrap up because this was our main event. It wasn't too many matches, but it was so much going on that um, the matches drag on and all the things that's going on. For the uh, the matches and all the championships, but uh, the men's Royal Rumble didn't really have many uh, surprise entrants. Just to wrap up, we had Johnny Knoxville and um, 
Bad Bunny was a crazy surprise. Shame and Man was also a nice surprise. I think Bad Bunny and Shame and Man were the two surprises that I didn't see coming. But Brock Lesnar, it's just no, it's no surprise at that. And I didn't think he was going to be in the Royal Rumble. But once I saw him lose his title, it's like he, he's probably not going to take that lion down. But I thought it would be somebody else. I thought he would still go over to SmackDown anyway to go challenge Roman Reigns to go beat down on him. Or at least try to cause r- ruckus and havoc and stuff like that against the Usos, his cousins, and stuff like that. But seeing him in the Royal Rumble was a, a, a nice little shocker for that. And being number 30, he came out at number 30 in comparison to everything else. And um, once he came out, he just started dominating people. It, it just came down to Brock Lesnar and Drew McIntyre. So it was almost like deja vu from 2020 when Drew McIntyre eliminated Brock Lesnar. And now here we are in 2021 or 2022. And he ended up um, getting revenge and eliminating Drew McIntyre to crush his WrestleMania, uh, his crush his WrestleMania dreams and his championship uh, title hunt opportunities or potential chance. But that was it. So it, it's just things like this that I didn't really want to see. I didn't want to see Brock Lesnar win the Royal Rumble. I was hoping to see AJ Styles win. It sucks that he got elim- eliminated. I wanted to see AJ, maybe Ricochet, just somebody that's different that can get a chance to win. And when they have championships and champions in the Royal Rumble match, like Intercontinental Champion Shinsuke Nak- Nakamura and Damian Priest, the United States Champion, they're just there to fill the slot. They're not going to win, you know? So they can have all these other deserving superstars. Cesaro what, didn't even have a Rumble match. He wouldn't even, Cesaro wasn't even in the match. So he was probably injured from the uh, the previous tag match from Friday Night SmackDown. See what I'm saying? Those other superstars could have been in the match like him and maybe some others. But after releasing so many superstars, you're, you're just running out of ideas. You're running out of ideas at some point and you don't know what to do with these superstars. So you got to let them go. So, because they don't know what to do with them, and they're just they're just going to be utilized. I hope they get utilized right on AEW, and just with all these superstars that are just gone now, Samoa Joe and all the other ones, you won't see those superstars anymore, and uh, they're just going to continue to run short on the matches and continue to promote the same superstars. Hopefully not, but Ronda Rousey, she's winning at WrestleMania. Brock Lesnar, he's going to win at WrestleMania. So they're all going to get, they're both going to get their redemption runs and be able to secure those championships so you don't really have to watch the matches to see and understand what was going on they put they set everything up for a reason they were going to have bobby lashley beat Brock lesnar he was going to end up he was going to win the match anyway so they had set it up let's have somebody come out let's have roman reigns come out and interfere to build that that feud up and make it even more spicier that and have paul Heyman betray his own client to go back to the tribal chief to renew that relationship and then it builds up so much hype and so many questions of what's going to happen next who's he going to challenge what's going to happen and then with Seth Rollins not with that unfinished match and ending in the DQ let's go back up ending in the DQ he deserves to get another match I hope he does but I feel like he probably won't I don't know it was just a one-time thing but it just shows just what I got from the match it shows that he's forever going to be in his head and and I don't know. He's he's definitely isn't un, he definitely seems to be beatable at that rate. So it's just it, it couldn't went on longer. But I just hope to see what else uh, other superstars get some kind of title opportunities. I really wish uh, we had some different winners tonight. But what Ronda Rousey again with that rumor coming out of her return being set and ready to compete again and set to return tonight for the Rumble. I already knew what was up for both Rumble matches, especially when Brock Lesnar came out. <laughs> so it's just a dead giveaway. But we have so many other superstars that are missing the, the different talents, just different things that can they can the writers can do. It's just it's not good writing. It's not good booking for these superstars when they come out and they promote them, they build them up, and they shut them down. And it's not that's not fair. And then they give them a title. You give them a title run, and then. It doesn't last that long, but Roman Reigns got a title for 500 days and stuff like that. Uh, they're not going to do that same sort of treatment for these other superstars. They'll give them a short title run, and then they'll give it back to the same superstars all over again. 
But that's just the pattern. And that's how these superstars end up moving on from the company. So I just hope that it gets a little bit better for what they're going to do. And the Royal Rumble was decent, but I'm just not too happy with the the winners. And it, it's just it just seems like it's just on a quest for revenge for both Rumble competitors. Ronda Rousey's back to get that championship that she lost and to get back at Becky. And now Brock Lesnar comes back. He comes. Well, he didn't come back. He he got it. He just so having to be an entrant, the last entrant, number 30, coming in to take over to try to get the championship. So now he's going to go back after Roman Reigns all over again. So it's just going to be, it's almost like it's just the repeat of the past. It's deja vu all over again, but they're able to shine as Rumble winners to be able to get their championship opportunities.